Hey everyone, this little drone is the one that I showed in my last video, and if you saw that video, then you saw that I rotated this flight controller 90 degrees relative to how it would have been mounted in order to put the USB in the back. And I do this sort of thing all the time when I'm making builds. Uh, it's quite common for me to take a flight controller and mount it backwards or upside down because I build a lot of custom builds and I do a lot of modifications like this one. So I'm often trying to fit it into a different way that it wasn't intended. There are actually two ways to do this. One is to adjust settings on the ESC and flight controller, and the other is to adjust settings only on the radio. I'm going to show you the option that involves the settings on the flight controller first because that's my preferred method, but we'll talk about the pros and cons. And then I want to show you some of my other builds and the way that mounting a flight controller in uh, creative ways can really be helpful. So today is going to be kind of a how-to video, and we'll start with some footage that I recorded when I was making the video about this one, but decided to split out into separate videos, so we'll run that now. This is the front of the drone up here, and I like to fly with reverse motor orientation, uh, or props out, which means that these two props spin out away from the camera. These back props spin away from the back of the drone, but this didn't used to be the back of the drone. Uh, recall that the USB used to be on the side, so this was the front. So originally I had this set up props out, and this one was spinning uh, clockwise, and then it's gonna move down here and it's gonna become a counterclockwise. So all of the motors are gonna to have to reverse orientation. We're also gonna to have to remap them because they're in different places, and we're gonna to have to tell the flight control firmware uh, that the gyro has been rotated as well, and here's how we do all of that. Let's start with the ESCs. I happen to be running JESC, uh, but that's not important for this. You could be running BlueJ, Jazz Maverick, BLHeliM, BLHeliS, uh, it doesn't matter. All the configurators look the same. So you're just gonna hit connect, read setup, you can see, there we go, you can see my four different ESCs and the motor direction. If it says normal, flip it to reverse. If it says reverse, flip it to normal. That's how you reverse the motor direction. So after you've switched all of that, you just hit right setup and we're done with this. For the flight controller, I happen to be running Emu Flight, as you can see. I do not have a special tune for this. It's pretty much the stock tune. You could be running Beta Flight. Uh, all of this setup is gonna be the same. Uh, so you're just gonna connect USB and then hit connect. And then on the configuration tab, you can see that it has motor direction is reversed. You can see the direction of the arrows. So that should match your props. And then down here, you need 90 degrees for the yaw orientation of the board. Uh, that tells it to correct the gyro sensor. And you should be able to hit save and reboot after you do that. And then you should be able to come back to this setup screen, point the drone away from you, reset Z, and you should see it move like you expect. The last thing we have to fix is the motor resource ordering. You can see how they're numbered, one, two, three, four, it's the same ordering in Betaflight. And that ordering is tied to resources, which is the pins on the flight controller that are driving those motors. But since we rotated it, the motor one is gonna use the resource that was driving motor two, two is gonna use the resource from four, four is gonna use the resource from three. And I wish there was an easy way to rotate these in the user interface, but you have to go to the CLI and type resource, enter. You can see all the resources, including the motor resources. And just so you can see how this goes, I actually reverted these numbers back to what they used to be. So I'm gonna come in here and resource motor one. And since this is taking the resource that used to be on motor two, it's gonna be B07, B07, enter. Motor two is gonna use B08, which was formerly on motor four. Motor three is gonna use B10, which was formerly on motor one, and motor four is gonna use B06, which was formerly motor three. So that's all done, and you just hit save. And then it's a good idea to come back to the motors tab. If you have a battery connected, you can flip this switch right here. Uh, it's a good idea to have props off, and then you can spin the motors one at a time, just to make sure each one is spinning in the correct direction according to this diagram, and that the correct number motor is firing. And if all of that is good and the props are on the right way, you should be good to go. If your build has a different flight controller or it's mounted in a different way, then you might need different motor directions or you might need different resource numbers, but the techniques are gonna apply the same no matter what you build. So hopefully I've given you some good tools there if you didn't already know how to do that. But like I said at the beginning, there is another way which just involves the radio. And honestly, I forgot about this. It's just been so long um, since I've even thought about doing it on the radio. And I've built so many drones customizing the motors the way that I just showed you. But this way is actually simpler and there's some advantages. 
The idea is to create a new model on your radio and then swap the pitch and roll axes on this stick. Uh, because remember, it used to think that this was the forward direction, now this is the forward direction. But if we didn't change anything and we pitched forward, it would think that this is pitching forward, but according to the new camera direction, that looks like a roll to the right. But if you switch them around, you can actually correct for that. If I want to pitch forward, pitching forward on the stick like this, and I want to pitch down with the camera, then that's going to be a roll to the left. Pulling back is going to be a roll to the right. And then this direction is going to be pitch, according to the flight controller. And that can actually work because a quadcopter can fly just as well sideways as it can forward. So if you want to just do it on the radio, that is certainly an option. If you do it on the radio, there is another advantage, which is that you can later come in and reflash your flight controller, and you don't have to worry about resetting up those resource remappings. So that's really convenient as well. So yeah, doing it on the radio is definitely simpler. If you want to do it that way, I don't blame you. Um, I personally choose to do it the other way, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, first of all, I have a lot of different drones with different receivers and different setups, but I bind them to a very small number of models on my radio. That's just my choice. For example, this model is D8, and I literally bind every single D8 drone, which includes all of my whoops pretty much, uh, to this one model on my radio. All I have to do is switch it to this model and I'm ready to go. I don't have to have one of these for every single drone and remember what I had called it. So that's my own choice. But there's another consideration and it has to do with the motor direction relative to the camera. If my camera is pointing this way and I'm flying forward, then these props are spinning out away from the camera. And again, that's the reverse motor direction or props out direction. But if I started flying sideways, from that direction, these props are actually spinning in towards the camera or props in. So if you do a 90 degree rotation and you just fly that way and you only adjust it on the radio, then you're gonna switch from props in to props out or from props out to props in. And that might be fine if it's switching to the direction that you want, but I want props out on this drone and I want props out on all of my micros. Uh, even on bigger drones, I fly them that way as well. Uh, that's my preference. Uh, I'd love to go into that in more detail, but that would be a different video. Uh, so if you just switch the direction, then you're just kind of have to accept a change in uh, the prop direction relative to forward. But if you want to customize that, then you're going to be going into the flight controller and ESCs anyway. And that's often the case for me. The main reason I'm making this video is because I want you to be empowered, uh, to know that you can be creative, to think about mounting the components in the way that is best for your build. Don't feel like you have to be locked into any particular way. And so now uh, to show you that, I want to show you several different builds that I have here and how this has come in handy. So this is basically a 1S baby tooth, but it's got the Flywoo motors on it. And this flight controller is the Crazy B F4 Lite. So this is a whoop style flight controller, but I took off the motor plugs and I flipped it 180 degrees of roll so that I could put the USB up and that's so that USB doesn't hit the frame. That works out great on this one because an upward USB is easy to access. But this one has the DJI Cadex Vista right above it. So an upward USB would be no good. So this one, I've actually got the USB pointing down. Again, whatever works for your build. Here's another example. This is a four inch racing drone. The frame is the Twig Mutant R by RacerX FPV. And the flight control I've got in here, you can put a 20 by 20 stack, but I chose to use a 35 amp uh, all-in-one board from Beta FPV. So that's what that is. But the USB you can see here, if I had mounted it forward, it would have been blocked by this post in the frame. So that combination just didn't work out. I had to rotate this flight controller 90 degrees, which is why you can see the capacitor is right here on the side as well. I always put the capacitor here, not out on the power lead. But since I was rotating the flight controller and the power lead was coming out on the side, I decided to go like this and plug in the battery from the side as well. So again, whatever works. The rotations don't even have to be multiples of 90 degrees. This cute little frame actually takes a 16 by 16 stack and it's rotated 45 degrees relative to how they normally would be mounted. So that's just an example. Uh, this is a frame I've had for a long time. This used to be a 2S drone. I took the components off of it because those components are what became my first uh, 2S whoop. There's a really old video on my channel about this if you want to check it out. Uh, but this is the build that inspired the Beta 75X. In fact, it was directly modeled on these components. And one more example, this is a five inch drone. It's the Super G frame from Project 399. Uh, this is easily my heaviest drone, but it flies awesome. It's so smooth. I recently tuned it up with black box um, and you know, the acceleration isn't that fast, but it's just so smooth, especially with low pitch props and these 25 millimeter FPV cycle motors. 
Uh, Kebab FPV sent me these motors to test out, so thank you, Kebab. I bought the rest of these parts, including the stack. And what I want to show you today is the stack right here. It's actually a 30 by 30, and the flight controller on top is the Bardwell F7. There's a 60 amp ESC down here. This thing is just a beast. For this build, I actually mounted the ESC backwards, so it's 180 degree rotation in yaw, and I did that so that this power lead would come out of the front. And that's because of this air unit in the back, which takes up too much space. I didn't want the power leads to have to go around that. And I needed space for a nice big uh, 6S capacitor in the front here. Having this come up and it straps on like that, it actually works pretty well. But that was a choice that I made for the ESC. And the flight controller is actually rolled 180 degrees so that it's upside down. And the point of that is to be able to do all of the wires and solder everything on and then flip it upside down and keep all of the wires in the center of the stack. There are zero wires on top of it, which means there's nothing that can catch on these straps. Hope this video has stirred some creative juices for you, got you thinking about how you might want to build things for your next custom drone. And if you already knew how to do all of these things, thanks for watching all the way to the end anyway. But if you are new and this stuff is still kind of intimidating or bewildering to you, that's totally cool. Welcome to FPV. I would encourage you to check out videos on the specific things. Like I didn't show you how to set it up on the radio because there's lots of different radios and the instructions may be a little bit different. So I would encourage you to look up your own radio. There's probably specific videos on that. There's Definitely videos on BL Heli, JESC, Beta Flight, Emu Flight, all those different kinds of things. I would encourage you to check that out. As far as resource remapping, Joshua Bardwell has a good video on that. I'll put a link down in the video description if you want to learn more about the types of things you can do with resource remapping. I know there's a lot to learn. I can't possibly reiterate all of that information, and I don't need to because it's already out there, but I'm happy to point you in the right direction. So thanks for watching. Uh, comments and questions, of course, are welcome down below, and I'll see you next time.